And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Carlos Coltes, who during his near-death experience went to heaven, and today we're going to talk about it. Carlos, thank you for joining me and welcome. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. It's a, it's a real pleasure and an honor to be here with you, sharing, uh, uh, sharing uh, my story and, and getting to uh, connect and meet you personally and, and connect with your audience as well. You have a, you have a great podcast. I'm, I'm, I've been a, a subscriber of yours for a couple of years. And oh. uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm very, very happy to be here with you. Thank you very much. Carlos, let's start on the day that it happened and go from there. Okay. Um, this experience I have, uh, it happened about 20 years ago. Um, it, it, it was a series of events that, that led to it. And you could say I was uh, going, or going through a dark night of, of the soul. And the thing that it's for my life, I, I came to a point um, where I uh, I realized that I didn't know how to live my life. You know, I I was somewhat successful in, in what I tried to do, but uh, I was practicing Buddhist, um, very uh, very devoted to to my practice. I could read everything and anything about uh, spirituality. Um, I try to look for that connection to spirit through through the church and and, and, and mystical practices but I, I couldn't find anything really that that that, that suit that that desire of mine um, until I discovered Buddhism and so on but I, I have come to, to a point in my life where I realized that nothing of, of what I have tried to do, and I always try to be a good person and do the right thing and be there for others and, and so on. Um, but in the, in the end, everything had led to some kind of disappointment, some kind of pain. So it's like, I came to a point where it's like, you know, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, doing, I'm doing the best I can. And I still encounter pain everywhere I go, you know. And, uh, and I, don't, I don't know how to live my life. I don't know how to... I don't know what to do. I don't, you know, and I realized that, you know, I was living my life based on, on what I call hearsay, right? I live my life based on what other beliefs, uh, what other people believe, what, what the, it was true for them. Um, and it was all contradictory. And, and where is the truth? And, you know, is, is there a God? What type of God is that? Is that wholly benevolent? Is it not? So I, I came to a point where I really, really didn't know what else to do with my life. And I was, was so heartbroken that uh, I, I broke down at one point and I asked for, for a better way to live my life. And again, the disappointment and the pain was so great that I had decided that I, I, if there was a God, it had to show up. It had to step in because I, I, I gave up my entire life, really, literally. Um, I refused to think. I refused to engage in thought because every thought is about you know planning. And when I know my planning had led to pain, so I I refused to plan. I refused to think for myself. And I said, if there is a God, you, He's got to come and pick me up. And, um, and if not, if I, if I end up dead, then so be it. I need to know the truth. And I, I, I was fully determined that if there was a God, it was going to show up. Or if they're not, then, but at least I knew, you know. So, um, so in, in, that, in that state of surrender, I remember uh, uh, my Reiki teacher at the time that had told me um, that if, if, if there was one single thing that my spirit, my soul would have me do, it was to simply sit and do nothing, which is the Sazen um, 
type of uh, meditation, but I wouldn't even call it zazen. And so I was so empty of myself that you know that 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 message resonated, and so that's what I would do. I would just spend my day in in silence, and I would take particular times of the day to sit by myself. And uh, it was not even sitting. The, the way I describe it now is I, I would take my body and put, not my body, I would take the body and position it in a, in, 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 a, in a sitting meditation and I would remain there. But it wasn't even me sitting because if I'm sitting, I'm doing something. <laughs> if I'm right, so I, I, at the time, I was so empty, I would take the body and, and seek the body, you know? And so as I was there, just, just resting, and sometimes I would go to the Rose River in, in Mississauga, in Ontario, and just rest by the river. And, and certain things started to happen, you know, that I... Uh, the nature around me started to take a, a, like a shimmering quality to it. And everything started to... To feel, to feel very, very gentle. And birds would come nearby and I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even pay attention to them, but I would notice, I could feel them. And there were moments that, that were so moving because I would see no difference between myself and those little birds. And then I would, my mind would remember the passage of, of the Bible about, you know, the lilies of the field and the and the birds of, of the air, you know, if God takes care of them, how much, how could not take care of me, you know? But I had such a low self-esteem that I never thought that, that you know, that I, I mattered at all. I never felt that. So this was a contrast, right? And so things like that started to happen. This, this friend of mine where I was staying, because I was homeless at the time, I ended up being homeless and, and this friend said, you know, come with me. And she had a collection of books in her library and, and she said, she invited me to, um, uh, to pick up any of the books if I wanted to read it and, and put it back once I was finished. And, and I picked up three books that really jumped at me. And one of the books is called The Yeshua Letters. In the Yeshua Letters, um, uh, in the preface, uh, Alan Cohen uh, speaks of uh, uh, this being a very special book, and he says this this is is, is a conversation of Jesus with Mar John Mark Hammer. But assume that the words in this book are meant for you, and I read that and I accepted that invitation. You know, and I realize now that it was then that I started to live by invitation. I don't initiate things. If I'm invited, I accept. But I don't try to initiate things out of my own volition. And so I realized that, you know, in the, in the coming days, I could be sitting during the day and have some type of experience, mystical experience. And then I would come back to the, my friend's apartment, have um, supper, sit with the book and read the exact same experience that I lived that day. It was on the book now. So this, this was, um, and, and these are mystical experiences, like, like the world just breaking apart into pieces and realizing that God and I are one. You know, these are really, really deep stuff that I wasn't looking for. And, you know, it's a very clever way of of um, of, of spirit to, to to guide us. Because if I read something in the book and then I have the experience, the ego is always going to take credit for it, right? Ego takes takes credit or assigns blame. It does those two things. Doesn't know how to do anything else. And so, by having the experience first and then reading it in the book, it was that confirmation right there. So it led me to accept the the um the experience and so uh, as as true for me instead of you know 
mind made. Uh, I would start to wake up at three o'clock in the, on the dot. Um, my sleep was very, very peaceful. I would just fall asleep at night. I wasn't falling asleep. I would go to rest. Because asleep is, is, is different than resting. Uh, um, so I would go to rest and everything would, I would go so, so deep into, into my heart. I, I think I, all, the, the only way I can explain this is like going back to zero point before the world arises. I would rest in that space. And then when it was time to wake up in the morning, I would have dreams. But sometimes the, the, the dreams were jokes. And so I would wake up laughing, which is just, just a joke, but it's such a fantastic way to greet the day, right? And on top of that, the, the jokes and, and the stories, the beautiful stories that my dreams presented me, it was all about reminding me of my, my holiness and how dear I am to God. It was all about showering me with, with, with love, really. So that kind of massaged my psyche into, into relaxing more and more and more and more. And, and then one, one night I woke up at three in the morning, I or was woken up at three in the morning, and I felt a nudge inside the body, like to roll the body. And so I looked at that, I agreed, and then the, the, the body by itself just rolled off the bed, fell on, I fell on my knee perfectly on the assassin position. And I just rested there. At that point, I could feel like a little um, tingle in, in the heart of something very, very sweet, something really, really sweet. I started to grow and grow and grow and grow and, and, and it would, could be all around me. And, and really what I felt, it was the presence of Mother Mary. And in my mind, it felt like the presence of the Divine Feminine. And somehow this presence wanted me to know that it's not just any divine presence. It was the essence of Mother Mary, like the mother of the world, so to speak. Um, like the divine feminine, but, but with, with that one particular characteristic. And, and that's when I, I had my, this, my type of, of near-death experience, which is being still in the body, but being shown my entire life from birth until I was 36 years old. And yet, you know, in Neotas experiences and, and, and life reviews, many times we see that we feel everything that the other person is feeling as well, and, and, and as well as our own feelings, and we know everything about them and, and such. For my, for, 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 my, for my life review, it was very different. I could see myself at different ages and my body was changing, my psychology was changing and everything was changing. But I was still regarding myself as a little child. So no matter how old I was, I was just like a newborn. That's how spirit would see us. That's how spirit see me as a little child that it was struggling in a world that it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense for me. And so it was pure love and compassion. And such love and compassion seen my life in, through those eyes. It really, it was like, like wrinkling every single ounce of shame or regret or self-judgment that I had of myself. Everything that I held against myself was taken, not taken away, just washed away, washed away, washed away. And, and after that, uh, part of the experience ended, that when all that was left, it was this amazing love that it was, all the love that you could, that exist in the in the entire universe and the universes of universes that one love all that directed only to me only to you it was it's so amazing you know because you think you know that love would be non-personal 
you know, it's the same love for everybody. And yes, it's true. It's the same love for everybody. But in that moment, all that love was directed at me. And it was so overwhelming that I remember, you know, I never did anything special in my life to deserve this. You know, is this really true? This is, is this love real for me? Actually, the thought was, is all this love really for me? And the moment I thought that, that love, which is God, just sucked me up and I totally disappeared in that love. Totally, completely disappeared in that love. Um, now, because I was living at that time, uh, and uh, the way I was living at the time, I didn't pay any attention to to what time of the day or what day. So um, I don't. Uh, I had troubles um, giving things a sequence because everything was the same before, after, and and all those things still confusing to me in my mind. I know there is a sequence, but it. it it gets mixed up sometimes. So, um, so after 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 seeing this, and and uh, I'm I'm in this this tremendous this all love that swallowed me up. It's like like very dark and with stars all over the place, and um, and that's when when Jesus appeared as as a as a presence. And ask me, you know, do you really want to die? Uh, and, it's, and, and the only thought that, we, that, that arose from my heart, it was, I just want to go home. You know, I had no answers. I didn't know what I wanted. All I wanted was, I wanted to have peace in mind. I wanted to go home. And that's when I saw this, like, super amazing portal imagine like like the uh, the arc of triumph in in france but 10 times larger it's all made of gold and, and very intricate uh, uh uh like a baroque uh, style and, and with with pearls and and uh um uh precious stones and it was really 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 beautiful and huge and I knew that that was the portal of death. And on the other side is Jesus saying, come with me, as he always does, you know, come with me. And I go, mm -mm. <laughs> I just said, I know I want to go home. I don't want to die, you know? And, uh, and then he goes again, you know, a second time, come with me. And, and his light, it just became, became more radiant even more radiant. And I could see him, I could notice that the, this Jesus, which is this infinite light, which is on the other side of, of, of this portal of death. And his light is coming through the portal of death and touching me with his, with his words. And so with the second invitation, I go, hold on a second. If Jesus is over there and he's coming through the you know, the portal, and he's over here too, that means, and the moment I thought that means, I just went straight underneath this, this amazing portal. And the moment I'm passing through underneath the portal, I realized that portal is a thought. Death is a thought. And that was when the realization of me being of the reality of me as an as a, as an eternal soul, it just it just exploded into a, a, a symphony of colors, and I never felt so elated. I just exploded into light. I it's indescribable. The feeling is absolutely indescribable, and you could I could feel heaven resonating with with songs and music and and all type of celebrating sounds and it was like the hall of heaven was throwing a party you know mirroring my own joy of being home finally you know and so everything is you know it's amazing it's fantastic i remember now who i am 
And um, there is, yeah, see, here is the part. I, I skip the part where, where I leave the body and I'm seeing the body from above. Because that, that's something that happened. I, I see, it, it most likely happened after my encounter with, with, um, uh, with, uh, with the essence of, of Mother Mary. I think that's when I felt the love and I went very quiet, even quieter in, in, in my body. I felt everything come to a stop. All my breathing became very, very subtle. I, and to the point where it stopped, I couldn't feel my heart beating anymore. I could feel it slowing down, you know, until it finally stopped. The same thing with, with um, uh, the blood. I couldn't feel the blood, you know, I could hear the blood you know, running through, rushing through the veins, that stopped too. So, and that's when I, you know, popped out of the body. I saw it from behind. I, I'm leaving the body and I'm leaving this planet and I could see the planet, the planet uh, turning, you know, and that's where I understood that, you know how we say that love is what, love makes the world go around. What I could see is that belief is what makes the, go, the world go around, not love, it's belief. I withdraw my belief from the world and the world disappears. It's not going to be there anymore. So I understood that. And also I understood that as, as a matter of belief, the timeline that I was living, uh, because I could see people like coming off the, the planet, you know, and I understood that that was a timeline for the year. This was in the year, this was in 1999. I understood that part of the belief that makes the world go around um, uh, has to do in this case, in this timeline with the year 2012. And that's the great shift for humanity. And that's the point of awakening for humanity. And I also understood at the time that whenever I heal, I elevate all of humanity. And the moment you heal, you elevate all of humanity. We piggyback on each other. Yeah? And so, uh, again, this is the thing because I keep going and I think that that's probably when I encounter Jesus and, and ask me if I wanted to die or not. And after I go through the portal, I keep ascending I think that I think that's actually the 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 uh, uh, the, um, um, the sequence, and then I go ascending towards even farther towards the light, and I I found a barrier like suddenly something like on a, on uh, you know, on a train uh, uh, on the train tracks that you see the the barriers coming down. That's exactly what happened, and right away I knew. You know, a different body or the same one. And it was so matter of fact for me. It's unbelievable how practical the, 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 the spirit is. Because right away, I, I, you know, I, I thought, well, uh, number one, to come back to, a, to go to a different body, it implies that I have to go through, or I would have to go through, uh, childhood again. And that is the most excruciating time for spirit. Because spirit is, is infinite and we must mold it to this little tiny sleeve of nothing and live like that for the rest of your life. It's cruel. It's literally, well, there is no cruelty in spirit, but it's almost cruel to, to, to reduce the infinite to a sliver of, of almost nothingness, which is what happened with us, uh, with all the, the uh, um, all the veils that, that, that we impose on ourselves. So I wanted to avoid that. 
I didn't want to go through that. And I had, you know, a, a body, a skeleton, so to speak, that was that was still useful. There's nothing wrong with that. So I decided to go back to the same body. And so the one reason it was the the I wanted I didn't want I want to use what I already have without replicating uh, an unnecessary process. And also because I have seen that this was the timeline of ascension, I wanted to come back to the same timeline. You know, it was, it just made sense. And so I, I decided same body, and I kept going and like in a flash, I'm, I'm, I'm standing in in front of um ah uh, to say this uh, i i i had the blueprint for my life experience in front of me and i could see what it was composed of all the um uh all the matrix that that we use for for that um uh, belief system a lot of stuff i already had in there so it's like in front of me, I have the blueprint for my life and like standing horizontal and vertical, I could see all my thoughts, all the thoughts that I ever had. And I picked the thoughts that represented fear. And I feel the, 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 um, the blueprint with, with those fear thoughts. And the reason I did that is because I, I had the understanding that when, um, whenever we thought, we think a fearful thought, it's like a ship leaving a, a trace in, in, behind in the ocean. Energetically, a fearful thought does this. It's like it creates gravity. And the more you think, the deeper it goes. And so to the task is to encounter those same, same thoughts here in, 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 in physical life and remember to replace those thoughts for loving thoughts instead. So it's all, it's all about forgiveness, you know? And forgiveness is, is to realize that what I thought happened, it didn't. It was just my thought. It was just like the, the, you know, going through the portal of death. It's just a thought. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's neutral. Thoughts are neutral. And so I just feel the, 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 uh, the blueprint for the next experience. I, I really love it real good. And I, I know that for what would be the next lifetime or the last one, I would, I, I, I was left with just very little. Just a few challenges at the beginning, and then the rest was going to be a breeze. Now, all lifetime happens at the same time, and they all happen at once. Not only, yeah. So, um, so when I speak about, if I speak about a, 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 a next lifetime, it's actually, they all happen at the same time. Um, there is no next lifetime. And so, once I had this ready, uh, that's when I felt the, the third presence. I said that I felt three presences. One was Mother Mary, the other one was Jesus, and then the third presence is this being of light who is like, it, it carries all the knowledge that's necessary to create the perfect, or the perfect blueprint to fulfill the, the, the desires of, of, or the will of the soul. But just to, you know, just to double check. It's like you're a really, really, really good mechanic. And then, you, you know, the one that taught you mechanics, you know, come and, and check on your work. And so check my work. And it communicated just by thinking. In spirit, you, you probably heard this. You know, you think a thought and I think the same thought at the same time. It arises in both our minds at the same time. And it arises in mind because it's, the thought is directed for me, to me. So it arises in my mind as well. This avoids, it bypasses any possibility of, of 
confusion or, or misunderstanding because when I think your thought, I know exactly what you mean. Where are you coming from? Where are you going with this? I know I get absolutely exactly what you're thinking. So it's impossible for me to get it wrong. And the message that this being communicated with me, shared with me, it, it said, it is a heavy burden, you know. But knowing the opportunity that I have, because I, I want to use this lifetime to clear up as much as possible so we can all ascend onto 5D, which is the a vision that I was given later on. Um, and so I said, I thought, thank you. I will remember it's not true. And then the thought was accepted. And then I felt like involved or, or em, em, enveloped enveloped by, by, uh, by a, a, a mist, you know, like a white mist. Everything is light, and then there is this white light mist around me that make, made the light kind of, um, it created a buffer in a way. It, uh, it's like a holding area, if you will. And so I'm in this holding area, just holding, just just being there, and suddenly I feel a, a, like a pull. If I had feet, it was like somebody grabbed my feet and pulled them down. And as I'm going down, I, I I'm falling through. And again, I'm not falling through. There is a um, a gravity that's pulling me down, and I see. I'm a man in, in, the middle, in the middle of a vortex of really, really loud pictures just going all around me, all around me, all around me. And I could feel the terror and the chaos. And, and, and I realized then that there were two fears, I call my two terrors, that were pulling me down back into, into, this, into this realm. And one is the, the fear of being a abandoned and being totally alone, completely alone. And the second one is, is to be completely dispossessed of anything. So those are the greatest fears the, that were, that I'm here to work out. And they appear in many different ways, but they're basically the very same thoughts. And they all, you know, come from the, from the idea of being separate. From, from heaven, from God, from light, from, uh, from our essence. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm falling down real, real fast. And, and then I landed on the body. And the moment I landed on the body was like, it was unexpected. It's, it's like going into that holding area. It's like you forget what it is that you're about to do. And so it catches you by surprise. But then, you know, boom, I land on the body. And I go like, oh, <laughs> you know, oh, what happened? And then I, but instantly, instantly, I, I, it was like my heart fell on the ground. And, and but instantly, I, I, I came back to the, this, the spirit of acceptance, and I knew that this is it, and that it was nothing I could do to change anything. And so I went back to surrender, to the same state of surrender that I had before. Um, I don't know how, how long I spent resting after that. Um, but it, to me, to my mind, it, it, it's so weird because the, the state of surrendering and acceptance was so immense. I, I, I just accepted what it was. it was. I didn't question anything, you know? And it was like, okay, time to go back to bed. <laughs> you know, that, that, that feeling arose again, you know? Time to rest again. And I went back to rest and I didn't make anything about that. Um, so, now, when I came back, I came back without any filters. Those came later on. I spent the first three weeks 
in a state of heaven. <laughs> I was here, but not up here. I was regarding myself as the Holy Son of God. I would regard you as the Holy Son of God. If there was anything I needed, it came to me. If I needed a thought, it would come to me. If I feel cold, I would just think. I feel cold and, and asking for, you know, um, just reporting. I feel cold. I'm hungry. Or I feel weak. And instantly, I would, I would be restored. I would feel fulfilled. I would feel strong. If I, whatever is that I needed, I, 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 I didn't like being in noisy places. Noises are like an, uh, uh, like an assault on, on your own spirit, you know? And so I, I avoided busy places. I was living in, in, in Toronto at the time, and so it was very busy. And, but I would, I would go, you know, and, um, and, and try to avoid all that. And you know the, the contrast between how I thought of myself prior to the near-death experience and, and the truth of who, I, of, of who I am was so, um, uh, the contrast was, was so complete that I thought I was going mad. I swear to God, it's like, you know, <laughs> how can it be? How, you know? And so I thought I was going mad. And, and, and Good, we got you back stable. When you fell off the bed, do you feel like the action of you hitting the floor made you go unconscious or something physically happened to you that caused this NDE? No. Uh, it was the gentlest thing. I rolled off the bed and I just, when I said fell, it was like, Gently, just you know, um, coming in contact with with the floor. Uh, I, I was wide awake. Now I realize that I was awake, not enlightened yet, but awake. And and that state never never changed. There was absolutely um, nothing that could have provoked um, a reaction. Uh, it was all natural, organic, and, and, and really smooth, really smooth. It was just my, my own internal struggle that was the, the, uh, uh, the problem, perhaps, you know. But, but no, the, the, the rest was absolutely... Uh, um, absolutely gentle you encountered the presence of jesus did you actually see jesus jesus never showed me a form because he wants to teach me and i want to remember i'm not a body so he never showed me a body because he doesn't want me to imagine him as a body like this here no it's pure light and so he, he appeared uh to me uh, as a vibration as a hum that is easily recognizable i could i could feel it on the back of my um skull at the bottom of my skull between the ears i could feel a, a humming and it increases 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 and i or it's it's like i i i know what that humming is <laughs> i i recognize that to be jesus and out of that humming is comes out a presence and so I, I identify Jesus as the humming, the vibration of the humming, as a presence and as light. But, but never a body, never a body. I, that's, that's the whole uh, um, purpose of, of, of the experience, to remind me that I'm not a body, that I'm spirit. And I'm using this body to communicate that and to remember that. The body is just a tool for communication, for mind to mind, to join and remember the truth. Would you say that you had telepathic communication with Jesus? Yeah, all communication is telepathic. Yeah, we use the body here because we, well, I, I have my own 
ideas about that, but uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's so telepathic, mind to mind. You mentioned that you saw the blueprints of your life. Mm -hmm. Within those blueprints, did you see this NDE already planned out before it happened? I'm sure it was. No, I didn't see that. Um, but I do know that we have exit points or, or checkpoints. Um, they're peppered through our lives. It can be from four to six of them, um, which are... Yeah, one of them is 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 birth. Um, there are several others during during you know a couple perhaps in, during childhood, um, and then the last one, which is you know the, the final transition, we call death. Um, but no, I I'm, I'm sure it was planned because now I know that absolutely everything was planned. Um, but I, at the time, I didn't. I didn't see that in in the uh, in the blueprint. I didn't. Um, I remember the way spirit thinks. We think in in, in uh, concrete terms, right? Because we are so used to solid stuff, and that that our thinking, the human thinking, is is in, in concrete terms. A spirit, I don't think in concrete terms. I'm, con I think in abstract, in an abstract manner. So many things, many thoughts, many ideas can be in that thought, in that abstract thinking. And the moment I want to communicate that with you, it arises in both our minds together and it opens slowly. You know what I mean? And then you can see the details. The same thing was during the, uh, the, the, the building of, of, the, um, of the blueprint. I, uh, through intention, I would pull those things I wanted to work with. But then it's like, uh, this may sound funny, but I compare it with a bacon shake that you can get at the grocery store. You get all the ingredients that you want, you put them in there, shake them up. You know, put them in the oven, take them out, and voila, you have your meal. That's exactly the way, that's exactly the way it is, you know. It just comes, on, uh, it blends together with, uh, uh, by itself. It, it's not something that, that we do consciously or, or it, it just is part of the programming that, uh, uh, that we use in order to have this experience. Before we started recording, you mentioned that you had three visions. Was that during your NDE or afterwards? Mm, th those were after. Those were after. Um, one vision is the one that um, uh, led me to A Course in Miracles. And this was super, super cool because you know, after the, as I said, after the first, uh, the first three weeks after, after the near death, um, I was totally empty. I would go, uh, uh, how to say this? The best, I was like a leaf moved by the wind, you know, whatever is that spirit would lead me, I would go there. I have, I was empty of will. I was the Holy Son of God totally innocent, I need nothing. I need nothing. And so everything comes to you. Um, in this one time I'm, I'm resting on a bed at a friend's house. Again, I'm homeless, right? <laughs> Pumping in, you know, from home to home and everything even, everything, absolutely everything even. <clears throat> and, um, and this time I'm, I'm, I'm simply resting on a bed, fully awake. And I can feel the, the humming again. And I can feel the humming coming and the presence starts to come off at one of the, those uh, uh, portraits of, of Jesus with the three lights coming off the, the, um, uh, the wound. And, and so it, that presence starts to feel, the, it, it just feels the room. And, uh, and at, the sole, at the sole of my left foot, I start to feel like a, 
this really, really, really sharp pain, like nerve pain, right on the right on the on the sole of my left foot, and it got really intense. And I'm thinking, you know, well, you know, if you took the nails, I can take this one too. You know, I'm not complaining. I don't want you to take it away. If you took the the you know the nails for me, I can take this one, buddy. And the moment I I thought that, this amazing rush of, of 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 energy would come down my left side right down my leg and dissolve everything all the pain would dissolve and then i could hear a question no sorry i would say see i would say i can take the pain and then jesus there you go jesus would ask me the question and the first question w was, um, would you seek God and only God? And I had this image of me turning away from um, what I saw, like a city skyline, city, you know, and, and just facing, facing the heavens. And so that was the first question, would you seek God and only God? And I said, yes. And that's when the, um, when the rush of energy came through the left side uh, and everything subsided. And then the pain started again. I'd be, I would be asked the second question, which is, um, would you bring everyone to heaven with you? And with that, it meant, would I, am I willing to see everybody's innocence and only their innocence, regard every single human being as a holy son of God? Am I willing to do that? And I said, yes. And so the th that started the third part of the process, exactly the same. The answer came, so the rush of energy, then the pain, the question, and the third question was, would you accept your identity as Christ or Christ as your only identity? And, I, and, and that's clear what it means. So I said, yes. And the moment I said that, he slapped the number 365 on my forehead. It was like I had my eyes closed and I could see the 365, <laughs> you know, on my third eye in, in beautiful blue light, deep, deep blue light and, uh, with shimmering uh, golden and, 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 and white borders. And it's 365. And, and then, you know, the, uh, the vision goes, and his presence starts to to recede and goes back into the uh, um, in, into the portrait, and I go, wow, you know, okay, cool. Now you know I have a ear to fulfill this thing, and uh, you know this this promise. Yeah, it's really cool. And um, so the year came and went, and after that. All the old programming started to get landloaded again. So all the fears, all the cravings, all the insecurities, all the um, the addictions, you know, all of it started to come again. And I'm trying to fulfill this this promise to, to Jesus. Absolutely impossible. On, on my own devices, you know, I totally failed. I thought I had, I thought I had failed. Uh, so after a year, I was. I was feeling really, 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 really despondent because to my mind, I, you know, I had asked for and received the greatest gift a human being could wish for. And I just pissed on it. I couldn't, I couldn't live up to that promise. And I was really feeling, really feeling really, really, really down about myself. But then I had my birthday, and, and that's when uh, my mom came to visit from Argentina. Living, I live in Canada, and um, and she gave me from uh, came to visit me for my birthday, and she gave me uh, a, a cross, a golden cross, a beautiful chain, and the cross instead of you know Jesus and, and you know uh, nailed to it, there was a, a, a beautiful um, star in the center. I said, oh, this is so perfect, exactly what it is, you know. Because the cross is the symbol of, not of death, but the symbol of resurrection, right? So, oh, so beautiful. Thank you, Mama. And then my, I was living with, with, with my partner at the time. And, um, 
she's very attentive as to what it brings you as a guest. And she apologized to me and she said, Carlos, I know how much you love to read. I was looking for something for you. And this book came out of, literally, jumped out of the of a shelf three times. So, you know, I had to get it. If you don't like it, you know, that's okay. We just, we can just go and, and just exchange it for, for some other book. And I go, cool, yeah, thank you. And so, you know, I opened the book and the first thing I see is the, 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 that blue color of the, on the 365 letters, the golden color. And, and the book uh, on the cover it says, A Course in Miracles. And is um, the course in, A Course in Miracles has uh, several publishers. The original publisher of A Course in Miracles is the funda Foundation for Inner Peace. And their logo is a star, which is exactly the same star on the cross that my mom had given me, and had given me five minutes earlier. So that, that when I said, oh, this is what this 365 is for. Actually, I didn't say that then. I opened the book and I noticed that it has you know, a text, uh, um, uh, a workbook for students and a manual for teachers. And the book, uh, and when I saw that the workbook for students has 365 lessons, that's when I realized that that's what I agreed to with Jesus. That, this is what I said yes to to, you know, to do his course, to retrain my mind, to think along the lines, the lines of God, the lines of spirit and not ego. So, so that's the book that I can, that's the method, the methodology, the tool that I use now here to trade the, the, the fearful thoughts, or give up my, my fearful thoughts and let them be replaced by loving thoughts. It's a shift in perception. That's all that forgiveness is. That's all that a miracle is. A miracle is simply a shift in perception from fear to love, from death to life, from not knowing to certainty and peace. It is really my way back to heaven, right here and right now. So that was one vision. I loved it. The second vision that came before this one, and again, during that time, after my near-death experience, all I would do, it was just rest and rest and rest and rest. And, and would, if, if movement, movement would come, it would come from within, and I would agree to it. And then the body would move. I didn't even have to move the body. One of the things that you know, Jesus says and over and over and over again is you do you need to do nothing. Everything comes. All I need to do is rest and agree when the movement comes to go with that movement, not to initiate movement myself. So in that sense, I put myself in, in proper relationship to God. Um, that's also what it means to take the last place to be first. I had, I had tons and tons of understanding given to me at the time. Um, and this one time, I'm, 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 I'm sitting in pure bliss and meditation. And then suddenly, um, I start seeing this, having this vision. And, and I'm, I spoke about it before, I wrote about it before, but I never wrote it down in detail and I'm going to do that now because I'm going to kind of present it in public um, or the full version of it for my, on my birthday on February 8th. Uh, I want to have that done by then. Um, in, in this vision, I could, I could see like a timeline passing uh, that it was coming from behind through me and into the future. And, and I could see events very, very rapidly, events from the past coming into the present. And then I saw light coming from this, the core of the earth, from the center of the earth, 
there was light emanating. And as light emanates, in, is, how to say this? It just moves things around. Uh, a, a different density takes place as light arises. And so the earth needs to move and make room for this new light that is arising. That causes movement of the crust, that causes earthquakes, that causes um, buildings crumbling. It causes a lot of panic and a lot of fear. And as I see this, this, this light coming up, I can feel a message. And the message is that the earth trembles upon the arisal of the light of the Son of God. So in seeing this, I, I can see how there were like two types of people. And some people were really believing that, you know, this physical stuff is real. And they were panicking because they were in their head. The coming, their, their fearful perception caused them to panic even more. And then there is a group of people that has a spiritual understanding. And they... They not only they see this difficult, challenging events with hope, with with joy. Not even with hope. They know that that they have died to the world, and so now that the world is dying, they just celebrating. And that was the the message. The underlying message was celebrate. And then I saw the earth like in, in the vision going forward i saw the earth like splitting into two i don't like the word splitting i i, I it's like it bifurcated into two one earth is inhabited by those who hang on to their fearful thoughts and their fearful perceptions and another earth which was a lot lighter in density it was inhabited by those who remember God, by those who have love in their heart, by those who didn't buy into the fear, by those who didn't judge anything that happened um, and were guided by, by, by the light of spirit. So it's very much like what later on I, I saw with uh, the Lord Scannon uh, presenting, is the, 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 you know, the split off of the planet into two. That's what I was shown. And so later, and, and, and so, and the message was to celebrate, and that's, that's where it all ended. Now, years later, um, I, 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 I come to, you know, information starts to come, you know, from Dolores Cannon, for example, or from Iker Tolley with his book, A New Earth, which speaks about exactly the, this new era that we are entering. You can talk to the Vedas, they are gonna tell you the same thing. This is the end of Kali Yuga, you know? Um, I, I can go on and on, but that's, that's, that's the vision that was given from, uh, to me to, uh, to see, to be a witness and to, and to remember, you know, don't buy into the, the form. The form is the most deceiving thing we have ever made up, mm. you know? Yeah. Uh, just, just follow the spirit and remember to celebrate. Um, and so that's the ascension part that I saw when leaving the earth. Remember, I said that I saw the earth turning around yes. and little forms, people, people ascending. That's exactly what I was seeing. And now this is going to be massive. So the 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 coming of the new earth, the second coming of Christ is the remembrance of, uh, of the light of God, the light of spirit within our heart.
That's where it is. That's where Jesus or, or Christ comes. He comes into our heart as our own light. Not Jesus' light, it's our light. We have to own it now. Well, thank you for sharing those visions with us. After watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you open to that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's the best way to reach you? Do you know, I'm, I'm pretty active on, uh, on, on Facebook. And so you can just look up Carlos Coltes and K-O-L-T-E-S. Uh, and, 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 and also through the um, main, so to speak, or the larger um, neo Test Experience uh, group on Facebook. That's where I'm, I plan on uh, um, putting up the, the vision uh, once, I, once, I, once I write it down. Because I, I think it's really, it, can, it, it really will, will make a difference. In, in people's lives. And even though I know that each of our lives are, are, are planned perfectly by the one that's by ourselves, really, we can entirely, totally trust our plan and just simply ask, you know, what's next? Um, what would you have me do? Uh, just um, the best practice is, is to cultivate stillness within our heart and that's where all the answers will come you know so th the whole this whole thing this whole message whatever it is is the purpose of of everything i share is so to remind other souls of what they already know that the truth is within the stillness of their heart and you shouldn't be afraid of it well, Carlos, can you give us one last positive message before we finish up? Honest to God, Jeff, I don't have a message for you. I don't have a message. You, you are full and complete as you are. I don't have a message for you. You know everything you need to know already. Everything, everything you want and everything you need, you brought with you. Heaven is with you still inside. This, um, this simulation, it crumbles and it disappears and all that you have left is heaven. To, to my mind, you know, many times I, I, I kind of acknowledge that I'm still in that cocoon in heaven, just imagining that I'm here and interacting with all this as if it was here, but I'm still not. I'm not here, I'm still, you know. I'm still, I'm still home, imagining that I'm away. But no, I don't have a last message for you. You have all the messages you need. Thank you for pointing that out to us. And thank you for being our guest. I love you, Jeff. I, I, and, and thank you so very much for, uh, for your, your open-mindedness and, and from, from the warmth um, that, that emanates from you. It's, it's, it's really wonderful to conversate with you. Well, thank you, and I love you too. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.